All right, hey, what's going on, guys? Sig Designs here, and uh, today I'm doing a tutorial on something that I had requested. Uh, somebody asked if I uh, would make a tutorial on how I made my YouTube background, uh, so that's what we're gonna do here. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is go into render settings, and I've already done this myself. Uh, by default, you're gonna need to change these numbers here, the width and the height, to 1920 by 1080, if you would like for this to be rendered in full HD and come down to save make sure you save the format as a PNG file and select alpha channel and then when you go to the anti-aliasing tab it should be set to geometry by default you're gonna to want to change that to best and then the max level one by one is fine and then these two down here ambient occlusion global illumination will not be there by default so you have to go down to effect and select each one and uh, the last thing I did under the global illumination tab was change the GI mode from uh, IR still image to IR plus QMC still image. Okay, and now we're done with the render settings. So the first thing I did to uh, make the text here was I went up to MoGraph, went to Mo Text, and uh, went ahead and changed this to whatever you want. So in my case, for my current background that I'm using, I called it just Cinema 4D okay and then I went ahead right here in the font section and I selected uh, ethnocentric RG so that was a font that I used and uh, let's go ahead and make this a little bit thicker so maybe 26 alright and then the next thing I did uh, is made sure I selected T on the keyboard or just click the scaling tool here and I scaled it way down uh, and the reason why we do that is so that we can get this in the rendering uh, area so the whole text gets rendered out it's easier to fit it all in there in the frame so so that's what I did I scaled it down okay and uh, okay for this next part we're gonna need a plugin called Throwsy. so I'm gonna go ahead and open up my browser and uh, what you can do is just search it up uh, actually just go to the site nitro4d.com and it will uh, it'll take you to this web page and um, I believe you go over here to freebie and go down to Throwsy and uh, here you can download yeah right here for Cinema 4D 12 and 13 uh, just download that and then um, you can find a tutorial on how to install it there's many out there um, I really don't have time to cover that right now, but you know, this is where you download it. I'll probably just link that in the description. Um, anyways, so once you have Throwsy installed, you're going to come up to your plugins um, thing here and select Throwsy. Make sure you have your text selected over here. Whoops. And what we're going to do now is uh, you're going to change this to how many pieces you want. So say like uh, do I'll just do 20 speed this up and you're gonna press break now and Throwsy is gonna go in and break each individual letter up into that amount of pieces so each letter is gonna be broken up into 20 pieces okay so it is now done all right however um, we do need to uh, texture this so and add a floor. So what I did to do this was uh, for the outside here um, actually should have done this before but here you can see this right here represents the inside texture and this right here represents the outside texture. So whenever you open one of these sections up and you just click on one of these you'll notice this material down here in this lights up as well it's got an orange highlight around it meaning that whatever you do the this material it will affect all of these so all I have to do is come down here and change this to whatever color I want so say I do like a green and uh, now you can see that it changed all of these pieces to the green color that way we don't have to go individually eat one by one which would take forever same thing with the inside if I just select the inside it'll highlight which which uh, material that would be affected down here and uh, say I make this like an orange okay 
So now we got a green outside and an orange uh, inside. So the next thing I did was dropped in a floor here and uh, I went ahead and uh, right clicked on the floor, went to simulation tags and added a, uh, it doesn't matter, collider or rigid body is fine. I'll just do rigid body for this tutorial. Then I right clicked on it again, went to Cinema 4D tags, went to compositing, and uh, checked off scene by camera. Okay, and now if we play this, you can see the text just basically uh, shatters immediately, falls onto the floor. So basically what I did to get that um, shattered uh, effect was I went ahead a few frames like so, and uh, just left it right there. And now, um, one thing I do want to make note of is uh, since we got global illumination in here, we're going to have to have some lighting in this. Because if you see, if we go ahead and render preview this, we have a black screen and nothing's going to show up. So, um, we're just going to get some lighting into the scene. There's numerous ways you can do this. Uh, one is just go up here to the light tab, drop down a light, and you'll immediately see an image now. As you can see, it's starting to render there. Or you can add a sky. So come up to the floor tab, add a sky, and render it. Now you can see your text. And I'm just going to leave that sky in there for now. And um, what I like to do is use a kind of a, it's not really a plug in, but a little add on for Cinema 4D called Grayscale Gorilla Light Kit. Um, Light Kit Pro, and it's got a bunch of pre-made uh, lighting lighting sets for you to use. So, like, say right here, an overhead softbox, which is just a light source. All you got to do is double click on it, and it's in your scene. Same thing with any of these right here. So, I just like to use a softbox here, and that'll help us get a really good-looking uh, final render whenever we're finished with this. Um, but, however, if you don't have this, you can, like I said, just use the light or use a sky or whatever, whatever you prefer. It's up to you. Um, uh, another note, uh, Grayscale Gorilla Light Kit does cost money. I think it's about $70. Of course, there are ways out there you can get it for free. It's up to you. But anyways, so here in the sky, uh, this, this doesn't really matter. Because uh, we're going to go ahead and go to Cinema 4D tags, go to compositing, check off scene by camera. Now what this does, like I did with uh, did to the floor here as well, um, we've got a material on here. As you can see, it's gray. Okay, for let me just make this a little bit easier here. If I go up here, actually take this off, go to luminance, bring this up to like 150%, for example. I drag this onto the floor. We're now going to get a lot of lighting, uh, a lot of light given off by the floor here because it's illuminated and it's going to give off a lot of light, making our text really bright, like so. Okay. Um, however, you know, when the surrender preview, you don't see the floor. That's because we got that compositing tag on here, which is saying that this material that we just put on there, the luminance, is still affecting the text. However, you're not going to see it in the scene in the final render. You're not actually going to see the floor or whatever is causing it, causing the text to be, you know, do whatever. So if we take that off, the text probably won't be as bright. We go ahead and render this. So basically, it just it still gives the effect to the text. You just don't see the actual thing that's that's giving that effect. If that makes any sense, it's kind of hard to explain. But I'm just going to leave that on there for now, whatever. But uh, that's very essential that you make sure if you drop in a sky, especially when you do the floor and drop that in there, that you add the Cinema 4D tags and check off scene by camera because if you don't and you go to render this out, uh, it's going to render a background and you don't want that. So uh, this looks about good. So uh, once you're satisfied with what you have, you're going to come up to the save icon here in the render settings or the save uh, tab where it says file right here. You're going to click this button. You're going to select where to save it and name it whatever. So I'll just call it YouTube background. Hit save. 
okay and you're now ready to render so go ahead and start the rendering process you click this uh, middle button and it'll uh, go ahead and render render it out and how you know if you're actually rendering this out without a background you'll see that it's black here in the the when it's rendering that's how you know there's not going to be a background on this so this will just take a second I actually do this all on a laptop, so um, my computer is not the fastest. It's a pretty new laptop, but it's a pretty good one. But you know, these kind of programs are pretty uh, hard on it. So <clears throat> okay, you can see it just got finished. So this is what it looks like right here. We're just going to close out of that and uh, close out of that and you'll see it's right down here. And if we open it up, you can tell, uh, I can see that it rendered without a background, which is what we want. So you know, go ahead and exit out of that. Let's go ahead and open up Adobe Photoshop. All right. And uh, go ahead and go here, file open and uh, I'm going to open up a YouTube template. Actually, right here. Open this one up. All right, so we've got a YouTube template to work with. And now I'm just going to go back to my desktop and open up uh, the background here. Once you get it imported into... Adobe Photoshop, you're going to want to control A, control C on this to copy the whole uh, image. And then click back over here and press control V and then control T. And now you have full control over the text. So if we just hold shift and uh, click and drag this over, we can rotate it exactly 90 degrees. Hold shift again and click down here and we can scale it down while keeping it in proportion so it doesn't become like too stretched or whatnot. So something like that, whatever you become satisfied with. Okay, that looks fine. You need to press enter or just click this to apply the transformation. So you can see it's now on our scene. So that's basically what I did for the um you know for that part. The next thing that I did to get the flares in there was I went to file open. I've actually got a GFX pack. I went to uh, clicked on this folder, went to optical flares, and I selected one of these flares. There's like a million of them. So I'll select this one, uh, for example. This we don't have to worry about rendering out the background because it doesn't really matter. Same process, control C, control V, copy and paste it, and then shift, drag it exactly 90, and then uh, we're going to want to place this behind actually hold on let me go ahead and apply this real quick drag this down behind there control T again and uh, something like that okay there you go so you can see it's behind there now and then I pretty much did the same uh, for this side uh, let me just use that one Control A, Control C, Control V, Control T, Shift and drag, drag it into position, and then enter, and there you go, it's applied. Um, and then the very last thing that I did, I just added some uh, pre made icons. Um, once again, here in this GFX pack that I have, I went to. Um, Let's see. Actually, I think it's yeah, right here. Just added a Facebook icon, whatnot. So I got it in there. 
Control A, Control C, Control V, Control T. Place this right here on the side, wherever. And, you know, I just kept kept doing that pretty much. Um, same process as before. Drug it in there. Pressed enter. And then I went to the uh, text tool down here. Clicked anywhere. Typed in places to find me. Okay. Pressed. Um, then went ahead and hit control T. Selected the text. Rotated it 90 degrees. Put it right there. Bam. And, uh, Obviously, if I was really doing this for real, I would make this uh, um, text a lot bigger, whatnot. I probably wouldn't go with this look because I really don't like it, but it's good enough for this tutorial. And uh, really, that's how I did my background, and that's about how quick and easy uh, it is to make a background, YouTube background. And um, yeah, real quick, uh, I'd like to cover how you should save this to get the best quality. Um, don't go here and go to save as and change this to JPEG or something. You don't want to do that because that'll uh, degrade your quality. What you want to do is come down to save for web. And YouTube only allows a maximum of one megabyte, one megabyte upload. So uh, image. So if you look down here uh, in this bottom left hand corner, we've got a 1.106M, meaning that that's over one megabyte pretty much. So what we can do, the best quality image really is uh, to select here on the preset PNG 24. And uh, right here on the image size, drop the image size down to say 90%. Until it'll take a while, but once it loads, you'll notice the file size has changed. So you can see that it's 958.7K, meaning that that's uh, 958 kilobytes less than one whole megabyte. So this uh, would be an image that YouTube would allow to be uploaded and see I'm at 978 I could probably bring this up to about 92 percent scale so you're just kinda shrinking the image down a little bit to get a smaller size so that's still a little bit too big so you just gotta kinda play around with that until you get this uh, below 1000 K or whatever um, how uh, point I'm uh, the reason why I'm saying this, though, is because whenever you upload this, you'll get a much clearer quality. It won't be so fuzzy or, you know, it'll look really good. So uh, whenever you get this where you want it, you're just going to press save and, uh, yeah, do whatever you want from there. And, uh, guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's pretty much how I made my background, and I uh, hope this helped you out. As always, um, uh, please subscribe, uh, like the video, leave a comment down below, let me know what you thought. And, uh, yeah, uh, let me know if this helped you out, guys. I'll uh, see you guys later. Peace out.